Hey everybody, it's me, Mrs. Boots, and this is English Language Arts A10. Today we're going to be talking about transitional words and phrases. If you're at the point where you're done your essay outline, then you probably have a good general sense of organization in terms of which topics appear and when they appear in your essay. So when it comes to composing a draft or a revised draft of your research essay, you want to think about the smaller things that aid in making your writing organized and smooth for your reader. That's right. I'm talking about transitional words and phrases. When I say transitional words and phrases, I'm talking about words and phrases that connect our ideas and sentences together and help establish logical connections between sentences, paragraphs, and sections of your paper. They signal relationships between ideas like sequence, contradiction, support, etc. And they help your reader follow along without having to go back and reread too much of your writing. Think of your ideas and topics uh, like little islands. You have three body paragraphs, and they're on their own in the sense that they're focused on one main topic. But your other paragraphs also relate to each other in the sense that they are all supporting a broader topic or idea. And that's where transitional words and phrases can help by acting as bridges from one paragraph to another. You can apply this analogy within each of your paragraphs too. Each body paragraph has its own smaller islands in the form of sentences that make up the paragraph. In order to make your sentences flow smoothly, you need some bridges to help your reader get from one sentence to the next without too much trouble. Those bridges? You guessed it. Transitional words and phrases. So let's take a look at what those are. For our purposes, we're going to focus on transitions in your sentences and between your paragraphs. And so we're going to use excerpts from a book called Because Internet by Gretchen McCulloch, who also happens to be one of the hosts for one of my favorite podcasts called Lingthusiasm. So here's an excerpt from that book. In this expert, the author is talking about the quick transition, sorry, not the quick transition, but quickly talking about the long transition of the first writing systems all the way to the time in which we live, where the internet is starting to change the way we think about language. I'm going to quickly read through this with you, and then I'm going to show you or highlight some of the transitional words and phrases that this author uses to help her writing flow smoothly and to show relationships between ideas. So she writes, the first writing systems were deeply aware of their limitations. They wrote only words, a mere aid to the memory of the reader, who had to infuse them with life again on saying them. Gradually, over the centuries, we began adding punctuation and other typographical enhancements. Just as crucially, we began expecting more subtlety from the written text. We began to see writing as a thing that could represent verbatim speech and stream of consciousness, even if most of us were reading it rather than writing it. The internet was the final key in this process that had begun with medieval scribes and modernist poets. It made us all reader, writers as well as readers. So in this short expert excerpt, you can see that um, I pointed out two transitional words and phrases here that help show some relationships. The word gradually shows a relationship of time. Um, and this one, just as crucially, shows them a relationship of importance. So just as crucially, this is as important as other things that were happening. And so without those things, this probably would have been okay, but these help us understand a little bit more clearly what she's trying to say. Let's take a look at another one. In this example, not only will I point out transition words and phrases in the sentences themselves or in between the sentences, but I'll also point out that the author uses transitional words and phrases to smoothly move from one paragraph to the next. In this chapter, the author is writing about the impact of social media on the way we speak and understand language. So let's read it and I'll underline the transitional words and phrases as we go. And I'm going to actually start right here where it says this. Even though your Twitter network doesn't represent absolutely everyone you talk to, even though not everyone is on Twitter, it makes for an intriguing new way of approaching the very old question of how new words catch on. Analyzing language based on social networks also complicates another traditional demographic checkbox, gender. The traditional finding for gender is shown in a study by the linguists Churchu Nevelian and Helena Ramelin Brunberg at the University of Helsinki, which looked at 6,000 personal letters written in English between 1417 and 1681. 
Person letters make a great corpus because, like tweets, they don't go through editorial standardization. Unfortunately, there's also a lot fewer of them, and they tend to overrepresent the leisured, uneducated classes. But they're still the best record we have of what day-to-day -day English looked like back then. The linguists examined 14 language changes that occurred during this period, things like the eradication of ye, the switch from mine eyes to my eyes, and the replacement of th with s, making words like hath, doth, and maketh into has, does, and makes. Pretty shocking stuff. For 11 out of the 14 changes, Novalian and Remelin Bernberg found that female letter writers were changing the way they wrote uh, faster than male letter writers. So again, you can see where I highlighted some of those transitional words and phrases that help establish relationship and make your writing flow more smoothly, but also bridge those paragraphs together. And so in this paragraph where she's talking about analyzing Twitter for language use and changes in language use, um, she's going to expand on why that matters here. And this sentence, analyzing language based on social networks, also complicates another traditional demographic checkbox, gender. So she's referencing something from the previous paragraph and helping connect it to the next one. And I think that really is something you want to think about when you're writing your own essays. How can you even make the flow between paragraphs great so that all of a sudden it's not an abrupt, an abrupt jump to the next topic? So now you know how transitional words and phrases can help you establish the relationships between your ideas and help your writing flow more smoothly. But which words should you use and when? Well, you're in luck because you can open up this handy list of transition words and phrases in the classwork section of our website. It provides a list of transitional words and phrases that you might consider using depending on your purpose. For example, if you want to indicate opposition, you might use in contrast or conversely. Or if you want to indicate emphasis, you might throw in a notably into your writing. I really like this handout because it organizes all of the words by purpose and it's easy to read, but you can also do a quick Google search for transitional words and phrases and you'll get a wealth of resources that will help you with this. At the end of the day, it's always a good idea to read your writing out loud. Not only can this help you hear places where you might be, need to put a transition, you may also hear other errors in grammar or phrasing as well. In fact, this is what I usually do when I'm revising and editing any written work, even emails. If I read my work out loud and it feels choppy, I try to rework it and maybe add better transition words to help my writing flow better. If you're unsure if you're using transition effectively, you should read your work aloud or have someone else review your work. If your reader says your work is choppy or abrupt, or if they say it's unclear how your ideas are connected or they're having trouble following your train of thought, you might want to consider building or fixing some of those bridges in your writing. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you check out the handout with a list of transitional words and phrases that can help you make your writing flow better. If you ever have any questions, you can always contact me for any help or show up to the office hours. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.